Hey, then Larson here. Welcome to the newest episode of Let's Synthesize. In this video, I will continue showing interesting stuff in this little remix stuff what I showed you in the last video. <laughs> So this is a little remix what I made just for fun, you know, I have no purpose for it. And uh, this is a cool sound, what sounds like if it was a vocal sample or something, but it's not. This guy here. And it is coming from operator, so today I would like to show you how I made it, and it is pretty complicated. And this is why it is interesting, and this is why it sounds pretty cool, I think. Uh, so the pure sound coming from is coming from operator. Let me just disable all the effects what we have here and show you the pure sound. Okay, you will see that it contains too too much effects. <laughs> but anyway, just So this is the pure sound coming from oper operator and it is pretty simple. We have two oscillators, a sine wave on course five, uh, no, six. So it is very late. So if I stutter, just please forgive me. I usually don't get up this, no, not that late, it's too early, sorry. So I usually don't get up this early, but today I had to. Anyway, uh, so it is on course six and the modulator one is on course six again and it is a, 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 another sine wave. And they are modulating themselves just slightly. And also, I made a short, plucky kind of sound using the envelope of operator A. And also, we have an LFO which makes some kind of vibrato to the sound, what usually vocal vocalists do. Clipping. So this LFO gives a lot more to the sound, and I think it is it sounds pretty well in itself. But in the mix, I don't know. It wouldn't it wouldn't sound pretty well. Even if I had an overdrive. I don't know, I just missed something. It's it's too dry and um, the sound itself is not interesting. It's Everybody hears that it's a simple FM sound or kind of s uh, massive or, or any kind of synth. Just a, a pure wavetable or a pu pure... Uh, I, I don't know, it's just too simple. Okay, so I had to do, it, to do with it something. And this is why I added this effect here. Where are you? Yep. Where it contains a neuroprocess rack, and if you remember, um, I released a full package containing these neuroprocessing racks about, I don't know, half a year ago or, or one year ago. I don't know, I don't remember, but uh, it makes a pretty good jobs. Uh, it makes pretty good job on, well, neuro kind of basis. This is why it is called neuroprocess racks, because you just 
you know, drop it onto a very simple sine wave or a simple saw wave or just a very pure sound. And it turns, these racks turn them into neuro kind of sounds. I think they do a pretty good job on that. So I thought just, why don't, why don't we just, you know, try some, uh, one of them on this sound? So this is why I added this one. It's, it's number nine. Yeah, it's number nine if I see it well. And the sound turned into something like this. So let's compare it with the original. Uh, so the sound and this rack contains two layers. I wanted to keep the original one for the pluckiness because uh, because the neuro rack version just washed everything away, so all the transients and all the the presence of the sound just fades away. So this is the pure sound with the rack, and it is a very cool cool for a layer because um, you know it just makes the sound more interesting. But I wanted to keep the original pluckiness of the sound too. This is why I am having this layer here, the lowest layer, where I applied a low pace filter, a high pace filter, sorry, and a transient master and another high pace with some boost on the highs. And this is all just, you know, the transient to make it more plucky. And uh, so this is the, the, the lowest, the plucky layer. And uh, let's check what this neuroprocessing rack does to the sound. This washed away phasey kind of stuff. By the way, I don't know why I didn't high phase this guy here. Maybe I did it in the last step. Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't matter really. Just turn back everything. Okay, so the neuroprocessing rack is pretty complex. It contains tons of stuff and I use steps, one, two, three, four, I don't know, like eight steps. Uh, this cocoa one, <laughs> is, <laughs> I don't know what it does. Um, probably just a compressor or something at the end of step seven, probably. But let's just check what the first three steps do. Okay, so they probably, if I remember well, most of them are multiband processes. So we have a notch filter on step one. So as you can see, I can turn back and turn on. No, turn off and turn on step one rack. So these neuroprocessing, uh, neuroprocessing racks contain multiple sub racks basically. And step one is the first sub rack. Okay. It contains a notch filter, which moves back and forth using this amount and using this ray three per four. And after that, it contains a frequency split. I used three bands to create this sound. And the first band, the top band, is uh, having a frequency shifter and a broken tube distortion. Okay, and an OTT. The second band uses a simple frequency shifter and the low band, just an EQ, you know, to separate all the stuff. And uh, because of the frequency shifting, it is a, it is an interesting stuff and a, a kind of experimentation. I didn't use any, I mean, on the higher bands, on the top and the middle bands, I didn't use any EQing. Uh, I don't know, uh, the frequency shifter makes some weird, weird modulations to the sound if you use them in multiband mode. And uh, sometimes I ex experienced that if I don't separate these bands on the higher bands, only on the low end, uh, they sound a lot better. And this is why I cut out all the, on the higher and the middle bands, high band and middle band, the EQing, so I didn't separate them, but I started with that. So this frequency split rack was really frequency splitting rack before, but when I applied the frequency shifter, I decided to delete the, the splitter, the EQA splitter from the top and the middle band, and it sounded a lot, sound did a lot better. So this is why you didn't, uh, or you don't see any uh, splitting EQ or, or anything like that in this, uh, in these two bands. Um, so this is the first rack, what it does. Let me compare it to you, okay? Or so just with that only, the first one. It 
just colors the sound, not too much. But let's step further to step two or rack two. As you may probably hear, this is a heavy chorusing What's going on here. Okay, so let's close step one and let's go to step th uh, two. So yes, I was right. It's cor and one chorus, two chorus, and another three band split rack here. So we have a top band which we have the frequency splitter, but it doesn't. It is not doing anything. A middle band with a notch filter and the bottom band where I didn't use anything. Only I made it mono, or no, I used only one side of the sound. Or the right side, yeah. So with this utility tool, I pulled everything onto the right side and then I made it mono. So this way, I separated only the right channel of the sound. Probably because when I use the this guy here, what? I'm sure you know that I always use this signal analyzer. I saw that something weird was going on at, well, one of the channels. Okay, so probably this is why I decided to use only one side of the bass or the low band. And this is all, it doesn't do too much. The main stuff, oh no, sorry, on the low band there is this monoing stuff or where I separated one channel and there is a chorus, not, not corpus, not chorus, but corpus and the limiter. So corpus just makes some kind of aliphoing to the sound. It, it makes some wobbling kind of stuff because I wanted to have something similar what I did on the where before the rack. Yes, here with the two choruses and this corpus makes it, well, it just makes a very good job. Okay, this is all its purpose. It's a preset, preset from the factory. Where are you? Corpus kick tight. This is it. So this is what I just dropped in. Okay, it didn't do anything else to it. And it makes the sound a little wobbly. This is all. Kick tight. And at some pretty heavy low end, uh, if I am correct. Actually, it kills the lows. Okay. So, uh, sorry if I, if I don't remember everything, uh, because it was a while ago when I made this remix, but I'm trying to explain everything, what I remember. <laughs> okay, so this corpus just makes it really the bubbles to the sound. Okay, so this was uh, where we are. Step two. So let's go to step three. Let me compare the sound with it. Okay, so probably there are some EQing and more notches to the sound. And we start with a fl flanger and an OTT, a gate, because OTT generates lots of, no lots of noises, and another notch. And this is all on the step 3 1. So not EQing, but some flanger and some notches. Makes the sound a little more interesting, a little more move. It gives a little more movement to the sound. So this is all basically. And all together, they give the sound to this character. But it's a lot more interesting if I just uh, if I just use the pure sound. Maybe it is it, it would work too. But with the rack. Where are you, Rack? I don't know, it's just a lot more interesting, especially with the second lead, but if you want, I can show you how I made in the next episode of Let's Synthesize, but right now, let's just stick to it, but let me preview it for you. Uh, I have a plucky lead here, but probably I was able to use it, but sorry, not this one. But The 
same would have been, you know, I just use it this way. But I found it is pretty boring again. Let's just add a layer which makes it more interesting or, or, some, or just do something to it. So this is why I added this layer. So if you're interested in this lead, just drop a comment or, or anything, just, you know, wave to me if you want this, this tutorial next time. Uh, I think it's, it's interesting stuff here. So I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you, enjoy, you will enjoy the next video and see you next week, guys. Okay, bye bye.